Hey everybody, in today's ZBrush tutorial uh, we are going to answer a common question I get quite often is how do I get a cleaner, high resolution BPR render in ZBrush? So, uh, BPR is the main renderer uh, to render out your images with shadows and anti-aliasing um, what happens most of the time is users simply just render their default canvas size uh, which means when you hit render it will only render the uh, the default screen size or your sculpting canvas size what most users don't understand or don't know is that you can actually change this canvas size to be uh, as large as you want so you can render a 10 megapixel image within ZBrush and uh, since BPR is a fairly efficient renderer it actually doesn't take this long so let's uh, get started so I've just got a default uh, installation of ZBrush here and the ZBrush version I'm recording this on is 2021.5 uh, but this should apply to, to all most versions um, so I've just got the default interface set up. Generally I use a custom interface but uh, I'm going to try and do this using the default interface just so uh, you can follow along if you have a uh, default installation. So when you launch ZBrush and all I've done is loaded a uh, ZBrush tool that I sculpted earlier and this is just a little uh, Lovecraft inspired fridge magnet uh, I sculpted for Patreon and we'll use this one as a demo so when I load this ZBrush tool in and uh, this is the default size that ZBrush has uh, started with and you can see we've got all these empty space here that uh, doesn't get rendered and when you uh, hit the BPR render which is this button here that will give you a somewhat nicer cleaner render and again depending on the size, size of your monitor this may be different but uh, if I export this out now so if I just go to document and export and we'll just create a folder here called tut call this one default and we'll just check the image size of this Okay, so you'll see the default dimensions of this image is only 1120 by 840 and that's really low resolution. Uh, for a nice image with lots of detail, uh, clean detail, uh, you want something that's a lot bigger than this. So how do we go about fixing that? So, first thing you want to do is go to document and then down here you'll see the document size and this is also currently set to 1120 and 840 so what you can do is actually change the size of the document so we're just going to do that using the slider for now and you see that if I adjust the width the height is also adjusting that's because I have the proportional button enabled so if I turn that off then you will be able to adjust those independently but let's just put that back and we'll just slide it along to something like this for now and hit resize it's an undoable document but that's fine we'll hit yes and now you'll see that it's actually just simply stretched the image out and you can see all these artifacts here so all that's done is uh, it's just grab that image and enlarge it which is not what you want and you'll see that you can't actually uh, you can't actually edit the tool anymore so this is a bit of a gotcha uh, in ZBrush what you need to do is make sure that you are uh, in the edit mode and then that will let you start editing the model 
Unfortunately, we've uh, got all these images on the canvas, so you need to clear that first. So what you need to do is go to color, and then hit clear. And then make sure edit up here on the top left is enabled, and that will get you back to the main ZBrush interface. Uh, sculpting mode, basically. So, uh, you'll find your so what you're seeing here is that the canvas is now stretched across the screen, uh, filling up the screen basically. And then if I hit render or BPR on the top right, and then do another export. So what ZBrush is actually doing is extending above what you're what you're able to see here. It's adding additional pixels to the left and right and whatever you to the actual size that you've set it in here. So again let's just set this something to super high, so 4K. Hit resize, hit yes. And then make sure that you go to color, clear. Drag out your model and then hit edit to get back into sculpting mode. And you'll see, so you can actually see in the little preview here, what you're seeing on your screen here is actually not the full size canvas. So the next thing you want to do in order to render at the full uh, 4K width size is you need to use these buttons here. So these buttons on the right actually control the canvas. So if you hold down left click on zoom and then slide it up and down. So holding down left click on the zoom button and then sliding it up and down that will actually let you zoom out on the canvas. All right. So now what that's doing is this is actually the width of this canvas is actually 4,000 pixels but what you're doing is just simply zooming out like in ZBrush uh, like in Photoshop so what that means is then we can now render the full 4k resolution image just simply by filling up this screen and then hitting render and now you can see that the render time has also increased significantly and that's because you know, you're rendering a lot more pixels but what that's going to give you is a lot higher res resolution final image from your PBR so then I go to document and export and then we'll call this one 4k so you see how much more detail we're getting from the render and then if I look at the actual JPEG so this is a default, which is 500 KB. This is a resize, which is uh, 700 KB. And this is the 4K, which is now around 2.5 megabytes. So it's a much larger image. And then if I open that up, you can see the full width of this image is now 4K. When compared to the original one, When we zoom in, you can see a lot of blurriness. But if we look at the 4K one, if we zoom in, it's nice and sharp and clean. So, what does that all mean? So that, that means that uh, when you're sculpting, you should sculpt in a canvas size that is suitable for your monitor or your computer specifications when you're sculpting because the larger the canvas size the more uh, CPU, CPU requirements it needs so for a faster response time when you're sculpting uh, just stick to a size that's the default or something that's low uh, and runs fast on your computer and then when you're doing the final rendering go to document and increase the width and the height of your document 
uh, to something that you will be happy with for your final render. So, uh, I just want to ex quickly explain also some of these buttons here. So we've looked at the zoom button, holding down left click and then dragging up and down that will let you zoom in and out of the canvas. But what if you wanted to get to the default uh, one to one ratio of so the correct size, the normal one to one ratio. Just hit the actual button and all that does is simply resizes everything back to normal, back to one, point, uh, one by one and then you can continue on sculpting as per normal. And then you'll see that uh, if I use a zoom again, so that so the screen is actually only displaying this section but the canvas size is this section here. So when you're rendering just make sure that uh, you zoom out and then resize your uh, model to fill up the canvas and then hit render and you should have a render size that's much larger than your default canvas size as long as if you increase the width and height. So one last tip, tip that I want to uh, share with regards to document size and BPR rendering is uh, if you turn off the proportional button uh, you can resize this to a portrait style canvas size. So let's just do maybe I don't know, 2500 by 3000 and then hit resize, hit yes and you'll see that it's actually stretched the image and if I zoom out using the zoom button on the left, uh, on the right you'll see that it's just simply stretched the canvas size so just make sure that you go to uh, color, clear left click to drag out your tool and then make sure that you are in the edit object mode that way you can spin around your object per normal and then you can render out your image in portrait mode and if you go to document export call this one portrait Hit OK and you'll see that this is the image we just exported and this is now in portrait mode and one last thing I want to share with you is just a simple really simple tip a quick tip is uh, if you want to get rid of the gradient background or change it to a solid color you do that within the document menu and then in this section here you can control the background color and also the range the gradient fall off and the gradient position so let's say we want to just keep it a solid uh, solid gray color so when you click this you actually you'll see that it actually doesn't bring up a color pick a uh, color wheel or anything what you actually have to do is left click on it, hold down your left mouse button and select a color or ho hover a color on the screen it's a bit of a weird uh, interface but uh, just left click on this section holding down left click and dragging it onto any part of your screen and that will sample the color so if you want it to be red and see where um, the picker is sampling and I'm still holding down my left mouse button so let's just pick, I don't know, pick a dark grey, this grey colour in documents and then to get rid of the gradient just simply change the range to zero and that will give you a solid black, uh, solid colour background basically so I typically, uh, when I do my renders, I typically just use a solid color. Uh, it just makes it easier to edit later on in Photoshop. If I, if I need to just pick out the background, uh, I don't have to worry about trying to pick out the gradient color in the background there. So if you need your gradient back, just change that range back. And you can also adjust 
play around with these settings uh, if you want to have a softer gradient etc etc but yeah that's where you would adjust the uh, the color of the background cool this video is brought to you by my generous patreons at patreon.com slash jc underscore sculpture if you'd like to support me in my art making and receive monthly bonuses such as free STL models, tutorials, working progresses, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Currently I have a sing single tip tier jar for less than uh, $3 American a month, $3 Australian a month and a mentorship program. Thank you very much.